This is a short uh, video review of osteoporosis, the use of the bisphosphonate drugs to reduce osteoporosis, and a brief consideration of the subject of uh, uh, osteonecrosis of the mandible as, uh, associated with those individuals uh, taking uh, bisphosphonate uh, drugs. So we're going to take a look at uh, our uh, handout right now. All right, so uh, a lot of this information that I'm going to present uh, comes from uh, the uh, website of the Mayo Clinic. Uh, I highly recommend that site for uh, authoritative clinical information, both on uh, clinical disorders, conditions, as well as pharmacology on the use of different medications and treatment of the disorders. So uh, in terms of osteoporosis, this uh, osteoporosis is simply the bones becoming more porous, a decrease in bone density, a decrease in the amount of calcium mineral uh, contained in the bones. Uh, and it is uh, especially uh, more common as people grow older. Uh, and with uh, this even more common in females than males. Now, just in terms of uh, a, a backdrop here, so under the process of bone remodeling, uh, I'm just gonna read this. When you're young, your body makes new bone faster than it breaks down old bone, and your bone mass increases. Uh, you reach your peak bone mass or bone density in your mid-30s, uh, and after that, bone remodeling continues, but you lose slightly more uh, bone den density than you gain, and uh, at menopause, when estrogen hormone levels drop uh, in women, uh, bone loss or bone density, especially uh, uh, bone density decreases or bone loss increases. Let me remind you of something that you all learned about probably in your anatomy uh, and, and or physiology courses. Uh, there are two principal types of bone cells or osteocytes. <laughs> there are osteoblasts with a B and osteoclasts with a letter C. The osteoblast cells are those bone cells that deposit calcium mineral in our bones, increasing ossification uh, or bone density. At the same time, the osteoclasts with a C are bone cells that are constantly breaking down the calcium mineral in bone uh, and transferring that calcium uh, from our bone to our bloodstream in order to maintain calcium levels in the blood. But as the osteoclasts break down uh, the bone tissue, that's called bone resorption, that decreases our bone density. So again, in terms of what we were saying, uh, when we're young, uh, the osteoblast activity exceeds the osteoclast activity. So there's a general increase in ossification or bone density. Uh, our bones get stronger. Uh, whereas as we grow older, uh, the osteoclast activity starts to exceed osteoblast activity, and uh, there is a progressive decline in the amount of calcium mineral in our bones and a decrease in bone density. Now, uh, the best way to keep our bones healthy and strong is uh, regular exercise, especially resistance exercise, uh, weights, and so on. But even just the process of walking or running uh, is uh, resistance uh, uh, on the uh, leg bones. Uh, to maintain bone density. Make sure that you're uh, taking adequate uh, uh, amounts of uh, getting enough calcium and magnesium uh, in your diet uh, or take supplements. And the special thing to note is that everybody, everybody should be taking vitamin D uh, or calciferol or calcitriol as it's also called. called. Uh, everybody is deficient in this. And while we commonly call it vitamin D, it's actually a hormone. It's actually a steroid hormone naturally made in our skin. But in order for us to make it, we need to get out in the sun. And generally, uh, we don't get enough sunlight all year around. And therefore, we are all deficient in vitamin D. Vitamin D is not only needed for the absorption of calcium from uh, the gut uh, and maintaining bone density, but it also plays an important role in uh, our immune system. And in these days of COVID-19, uh, everybody should be taking uh, a vitamin D. Uh, the recommendation is it, to take at least a 2,000 USP units. We'll see that written uh, in a little bit. 
Uh, so as far as risk factors in developing osteoporosis, uh, fracture, fractures or breaks uh, from osteoporosis are twice as common in women as they are in men because of that decline of estrogen hormone levels at around the age of 50 called menopause. Uh, the sex hormones, estrogen in women, testosterone in male, uh, help maintain bone density, uh, but estrogen production declines, uh, uh, stops being produced by the ovaries around the age of 50. Uh, in males, there's only a gradual decline in the testosterone hormone levels. But nevertheless, elderly men are still more prone to osteoporosis. Uh, there are many other factors that we've listed, uh, age, race, family history, frame size, use of tobaccos and so on. But I wanna especially draw your attention to long-term use of corticosteroids. So anybody taking corticosteroids, either for the management of an autoimmune disease or uh, who's taking it because of an organ transplant uh, or for other reasons, uh, not only do corticosteroids uh, uh, inhibit uh, the, uh, or impair the immune response causing immunocompromise, but they uh, also uh, tend to promote uh, a breakdown of bone tissue uh, and uh, osteoporosis. So it's important to be aware of that. There are many other factors mentioned on page three. I wanna also draw your attention though to excess soda consumption. It appears that uh, uh, drinking uh, sodas, uh, caffeinated sodas and so on, uh, the phosphoric acid in the soda uh, may contribute to a breakdown in uh, bone tissue. So uh, draw your attention to that. Uh, the, uh, I'm going to skip uh, a lot of uh, the information on page four as far as treatment for osteoporosis. Uh, in women over the age of 50 and uh, postmenopausal women, there's the possibility of taking estrogen hormone replacement therapy, uh, but that is not as commonly done today as it was in the past. So the most common medications that uh, individuals, especially women, take uh, as they get older to prevent osteoporosis, leading to fractures or breaks of the bones, including uh, 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 breaking a, a, a hip, uh, a, a hip fracture is a misnomer. It's really a break of the femur or thigh bone, but uh, very common uh, to have a, a fracture of the hip. Uh, so uh, the most important drugs that are taken are the bisphosphonate drugs. And the way these drugs work is they actually inhibit osteoclasts. We said that osteoclasts are the bone cells that break down bone tissue, uh, that decrease bone density. So the bisphosphonate drugs inhibit the osteoclasts, slow down that breakdown of bone tissue uh, and bone resorption. Uh, now, the bisphosphonate drugs, uh, their generic names commonly have the ending uh, nate, uh, so alendronate, uh, ibanodrate, uh, resendronate, uh, palmadronate, uh, but they are the most more commonly, they're more commonly known by their brand names, Fosamax, Boniva, Actinel, and uh, others. So uh, we've talked about how they work, and those are the drugs that are most commonly used to reduce the risk of osteoporosis. Now, uh, as I uh, kind of move forward, we're gonna skip this, but I encourage you to uh, read it over and look at it. Uh, we're going to come to this following uh, page, uh, last page, page eight. So uh, there has been a link that those individuals taking high amounts of bisphosphonate drugs, especially if they're taking them intravenously and not orally, uh, is associated with an increased risk of osteonecrosis. Uh, that means uh, basically killing of bones, and this especially occurs in the mandible. So this is known as osteonecrosis of the mandible. So the question is, if that's the case, is it safe uh, to take these bisphosphonate drugs such as uh, Fosamax? And uh, according to the uh, Mayo Clinic, yes, it is. Uh, the, uh, they point out that the majority of cases of osteonecrosis of the jaw, of the mandible, uh, involve people who, who had cancer uh, and uh, who were receiving chemotherapy and uh, had been given bisphosphonates intravenously uh, to treat the uh, uh, cancer, the metastatic uh, uh, bone disease or uh, metastatic cancer. 
uh, bone cancer. Uh, only a small number of cases of osteonecrosis of the jaw was reported in people taking uh, bisphosphonate drugs like Fosamex orally. So they uh, basically conclude that the risk of developing osteonecrosis uh, of the jaw due to bisphosphonate use is very low in people without cancer or other dental problems. So uh, we've addressed uh, in summarizing a little bit about osteoporosis, uh, the use of bisphosphonate drugs that inhibit uh, activity by the osteoclast cells that break down bone tissue, cause bone resorption, and the consideration of this possible adverse effect of osteonecrosis of the mandible in people taking uh, bisphosphonate drugs, but generally that's not to be worried about uh, if you're just taking them orally and don't have a, a history of a metastatic bone cancer and other uh, major problems of the uh, uh, mandible or jaw. Hope that helps. Everybody should stay well uh, and have a great day.